What Lies Below has proven to be a huge hit for streaming service Netflix, but what happens in the movie's wild ending, and what does it really mean? What Lies Below was Netflix's third most streamed title over the weekend, and viewers are desperate to know what the movie's surreal ending was all about. Released in April 2021, What Lies Below is a domestic thriller about a young woman, Libby, who returns from summer camp to find her mom has a new beau. Who has a speedo? Throughout the movie's creepy action, Libby grows suspicious of her mother's seemingly perfect new boyfriend, John Smith. From the little that what lies below shows of his true form, John Smith was actually a scaly fish person monster. I suffer from somnambulism. It's sleepwalking. I'm really sorry if I scared you. Like Aliens Xenomorph, the biology of this movie monster is difficult to discern, but the movie does show that he can transform into a human, can't touch saltwater, and, according to the last scenes of the movie's ending, is working with numerous other members of his species to impregnate human women. John Smith's creature design will be familiar to fans of iconic horror author H.P. Lovecraft, and his status as a part fish, part human monster seems to be inspired by the famous short story The Shadow Over Innsmouth, loosely adapted to the screen as Dagon. A shadowy group of identical men who hope to propagate their species by controlling the bodies of others, what lies below's fish people recontextualize the racially charged monsters of Lovecraft to make a statement about bodily autonomy and cultural misogyny. There isn't a specific culture that what lies below appears to be critiquing, but the fact that John Smith is a scientist actively involved in research studies could be seen as an argument that developments in technology don't always bring with them social progress and can instead be achieved in service of outdated, harmfully obsolete worldviews. But not anymore. I'm done putting my life on hold for your feelings. John isn't going anywhere. Unlike most narratives wherein the love interest is revealed to be a monster at the end, John Smith isn't portrayed as a sympathetic or understandable figure. Liberty? I don't have time for this. Anthology horrors such as Tales from the Dark Side, the movie in the Outer Limits episode first anniversary frequently featured tearful individual female monsters who didn't want to kill their male love interests, but couldn't help eventually revealing their true form. In contrast, What Lies Below, in an unusual move for a Lovecraftian romance, depicts a well-organized group of male monsters who are actively trying to seduce and control women, making their bodies into breeding chambers for their monstrous species. As a result, the ending reads as more of a commentary on the importance of preserving bodily autonomy than a standard story of love blinding one partner to reality until it is too late. Like Into the Dark's recent outing tentacles and the earlier Lovecraftian romance spring, What Lies Below uses eldritch horror tropes to symbolize a character falling so deeply for their romantic paramour that they don't notice their monstrous side. However, unlike those earlier examples, here it is a male love interest who is secretly a monster, and the depiction of the master is less a sympathetic tragic figure and more an actively malignant, duplicitous creature. With Libby not only warning her mother that John Smith seems too good to be true, but eventually also informing her mother that John attempted to assault her, only for her mother to not believe her, the ending of What Lies Below also addresses the importance of believing victims and not falling for the seemingly sweet veneer of many predators, not unlike the ending of Promising Young Woman. Given how impressive John Smith's buff physique, lucrative career, and apparent charm are, the message of the movie's shocking ending is to never judge a book by its cover and instead watch out for what lies below. <laughs>